You should tell the story of the rose. Oh, okay. Well, um, so I was driving down the Ventura Freeway one day and a song comes on the radio. It's a fabulous Danny O'Keefe song called Magdalena that was a big hit for Leo Sayer. And there was a verse, a line in there where he says, Your love is like a razor, my heart is just a scar. And I just thought that was such a good <laughs> line. But I kept thinking, as I was driving, I'm thinking, I don't think love is like a razor. Well, what do I think love is? And all of a sudden, that weird sensation, and I know you know it, I did. where somebody pried open the top of your head and starts pouring words <laughs> into the top of your head, and I ran home and I automatic wrote. I ran into my app, ran into my piano, I picked up my pencil, and I just started automatic writing. The lyric was just there in about maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Of course, that's, you know, time may have truncated the amount of effort. And then I played it for George, because I always played my songs for George, and he said, you just wrote a standard. And I said, don't be silly, no one's ever going to hear it. But, you know, you and me and Michelle and my three friends... And he said, something is going to happen to that song. And so I had it. I sang it occasionally. And then uh, a couple of years later, Michelle and her writing partner, Karen, had heard there was this film coming around called The Rose. And for some reason, they were looking for outsourced material rather than having one person write all the music for the movie back in the days when there were songs in movies. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, you've got the song called The Rose. You want us to submit it for you? And I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know anything about submitting songs. I, was, I wasn't like, you know, I don't know how to get a song cut. And I said, sure. And they sent it to the producers. And the producers hated it. They thought it was stupid. They thought it was a hymn and they were looking for rock and roll. And they just said, I don't think so. But the guy who was the music supervisor, Paul Rothschild, who had been Janis Joplin's MD, he said, there's something in this song. So he played it for the director, and then he mailed it to Bette. And Bette said, I want, it. I want it in the show. So it was in the film. And then, of course, there was the whole thing about who should sing it, her or me. Mm -hmm. And thank God they decided she should be the one to mm -hmm. sing it, because it, it was her first big hit, her first big anthem hit, which was great and sold a lot more than it would have sold if it was me. Mm -hmm. And then... All of a sudden, people started thinking me of, as, of me as a songwriter, and I just kept saying, "I'm not a songwriter. I'm an actress. This is my hobby. I'm not a songwriter. I'm an actress." This is my. And my husband finally said, uh, "Don't you think you should take responsibility for this gift? What's paying the mortgage right now? <laughs> what you know? This is you have a gift, and you have a responsibility to it." 